Ji Syak Bedo Pada Pada Bebe Pelo It's the monsoon season in mid-July in Myanmar, and traditional folk music is blaring across the mighty Chin Win River. I'm aboard an archaic, rusty commuter boat, headed north on a 580-kilometer journey from Maniwa, a town located in the center of the country, by river to the remote northwest. My final destination is a town called Kanti, and it's one of two regions in Upper Burma made famous for its amber mines, which are known to produce an extremely rare gemstone filled with extinct organic matter trapped inside from millions of years ago. Once upon a time, this substance was a sticky tree resin, but now it's known as amber, and it's being unearthed in the Hukong Valley and also westward in northern Sagaing State. These two areas are ground zero for the world's most famous amber inclusions today, yielding stunning finds of fossilized winged tetrapods, the likes of which the world's scientists have yet to lay eyes on, let alone properly discover in a laboratory setting. The boat I'm on is steadily making its way to Kanti, but the town itself is a full three days away. As the vessel chugs its way along the snaking banks of the river, we see Burmese crewmen dredging the riverbed for gold. Myanmar is and has always been known as the Golden Land. And even in the remotest regions of the country, gold Buddhist stupas can almost always be seen on the horizon. Evidence of clear cutting and forestry work can also be spotted from the river. Like other major rivers in the country, the Chindwin acts as a means of transportation and commerce to tens of thousands of people who live on its shores. Every couple of hours, the boat's captain powers down the engine so commuters can offload cargo and return to their tiny homesteads on the water. Dozens of locals are almost always prowling in small boats nearby, ready to embark the vessel in an ambush-like attempt to sell local food, lukewarm Coca-Cola, and other sun-baked preserved treats imported from Thailand, China, and India. After a few days of this style of solicitation, interactions can become tiresome especially when sunstroke. As the sun sets on the Chindwin, the captain will set his course for checkpoints along the way, such as Maulea and Homolu, where guests might have a chance to disembark, shower, and get a few hours of rest before another full day on the water. During my three days aboard the boat, I wasn't always so lucky, and sometimes had to spend the night sleeping inside the cabin. Earlier on, we were wedged like sardines in this uh, sort of common area with a bunch of other people. Uh, but recently, since we got to Homelin, another area up the Chinwood River, a bunch of people left, and we were able to sneak up and uh, take over the cabin, basically, for free. Which is good because the night before I slept in a hotel and uh, the beds are really small. Like, I'm six foot four and I've been spending the past like 60 hours folded up like a paperclip. So it's a welcome change to be in an area where I can stretch out. Uh, so far things are going as planned. Uh, the boat's actually moving faster than what was expected. I was expecting the boat to be extremely slow. Uh, we've got our Burmese tunes going. Uh, it's been pretty constant. Anyone who takes this journey can expect to be awoken or kept awake with loud sort of Dr. Success. Uh, Burmese music. Strange hours. A few hours later, members of the crew begin bringing tools to the stern 
Something's wrong with the engine, and the captain has anchored the boat on shore. It won't be until the evening of the next day that we finally make it to Kunti. Found this guy here, polishing this amber, uh, just on the side of the street. He's doing a hand polish, not using any equipment, just his hand. Uh, a little bit of paper and water, that's all, that's all it takes. The village is in the midst of unveiling a newly constructed statue of the nation's fallen hero, Bojo Gong San. And at the end of the week, a huge celebration, including all local tribal groups, is held to commemorate the statue. The following day, a meet up with local miners to get a look at some small pieces of rough amber fit for jewelry. Here he's showing a large rough piece of amber from the nearby mine that he goes to himself. He's using UV to just show the fluorescence of the stone. It's the first of many people I speak to before eventually negotiating the price. So uh, taking it out of the water just to get a good sense for what kind of amount that I'm going to be negotiating. Uh, this is almost all of it. There's a bit more, a uh, fair bit more. And uh, that's all about the art of the deal. Pieces are small, they have a good color. I own them.